anyone who is interested in me or Bhagwan or the work we did together, I'm there for them. Hi everyone, today on uh, Candid Conversations uh, with me is a very, very special guest. Um, with me is Ma Anand Sheila. Uh, we all uh, came to know mostly about her globally and in India and otherwise through this documentary which came out on Netflix in 2017 called Wild Wild Country where uh, she was shown to be the uh, secretary of Osho. She was the spokesperson of the entire movement. And she became a viral rage after that. The first question really to start, <laughs> to start off with is how was life before and after Wild Wild Country? Um, before it was quiet. Hmm. And now uh, there is more interest in uh, my life. Right which of course makes the people who are interested more important in life at present. And it is also rightly so that they should have the importance. When you want to know something, you are curious about something and somebody ignores you, then uh, it is a waste. And I feel that anyone who is interested in me or Bhagwan or the work we did together, I'm there for them. Right, right. And would you, I mean, what are your views on um, uh, whether you think, according to you, uh, were you depicted accurately in the series or not? From whatever I've read, you haven't seen the series. And uh, you said that probably you weren't shown in the best light. Uh, I have not seen the series. Hmm. I have lived Radnishpuram. Right. Big difference. And as Everyone have their opinions about me, about Bhagwan, about our work. Everyone has their own interpretations of it and prejudices of it. Right. So from that point of view, I felt that it won't be dealt with properly or dealt with only with negativity. Hmm. And it has been also, unfortunately, life's experience with the journalistic uh, situations mm. where uh, people present negative stories because they sell better. Yeah. We are more hooked on to negativity than positivity. True. True. Yeah, exactly. Negativity sells. Controversy sells, no doubt. Um, also, you know, after the after the series came out, there were a lot of Bollywood projects which are going to be made on you. There was one uh, which was uh, supposed to be with Alia Bhatt. There was one which was supposed to be with uh, Priyanka Chopra. Um, I think as of right now, both of them really either have been shelled or they've been on the back burner. But uh, for, again, from what I read, I think you preferred that Alia Bhatt would have uh, played the role better rather than Priyanka Chopra. Uh, is it because you like her better as an actor? For me, uh, Alia looked, looks similar to me when I was a bit young. True. I was younger. True. And um, Alia uh, is more natural for me. Mm. So that is my preference. Beauty has to come out from within, not very, from without. Very simply put. Right. And now, you know, I've, um, 
I was reading about the work that you do in Switzerland, which you've been doing for such a long time. Uh, you run two uh, care homes for people with uh, degenerative diseases. And I think in one of them, there is a certain section called the Dementia Temple. Could you tell us what exactly that is about? Yes, uh, we have this uh, one large room uh, with six beds in it. And there we take people with demence, uh, uh, dementia, orientierung problem, or severe, severe suicide uh, patient, or the people who need 20, 24 hours uh, uh, observation. Mm. And people in our home can stay till the last day of their life. So we want to offer them very warm, non-isolating uh, care. What happens in uh, homes these days that dying person is in single room. They already suffer mm. with the anxieties of death because nobody teaches them that death is natural, it will come. We all want to live forever. And this fear of death can make their life even more like a drudgery. So to avoid these fears, we have created this corner. We were, uh, we had to fight for this corner with the government, but government understood our point and said, yes, they accept this and we call it a demands mandir. And what it has remarkable effect it is right in our entrance on the left side. The people hear people coming, going, people, uh, our telephones ringing, dogs barking, we are talking. And though they are demands, they understand these daily noises and mm. these daily noises relaxes them and offers them a possibility to continue to live, though it is the end. And they can, in their relaxation, can go easily. In this room, we have our uh, administrative team works there. There are three computers going on. There is uh, talk on telephones happening. And this is what modern man is used to, not isolating in one room when people don't even know, are they okay, they need glass of water or something. It is very dry and cold in single room, but Warmth of people can do miracles. I think that's a very, you know, important concept which you've touched upon and also apply it because, um, like you said, you know, uh, the whatever happens in old age or nowadays, not even in old age, I mean, uh, even for youngsters and all, loneliness is something which really um, sort of gets you and, and, and kills you in a different way. So this is a good concept that, you know, they are surrounded with natural sounds, human sounds, animal sounds, and uh, everyday sounds, which obviously will help them. Now, uh, you know, one, one thing which really came out during uh, the documentary was that you built up Rajneeshpuram and your management style and your uh, uh, the, the way you managed everything. So if you were to give two to three management tips uh, to, to people out there, what would you say? What tips would you give? First, check out your commitment to the project. 
take responsibility. Don't be too eager to be boss. If you are a boss, it will come out. It may come out after 35 years. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter. And respect your team. Do not ask your team to do something that you would not ask yourself. Okay. Man and Sheila, just one last question from my side, really. And it's a sort of a personal question. You can feel free to skip it if you want. Uh, but, you know, something which uh, you, you also discussed and talked about it before. Uh, I'd like to know, do you still uh, love Osho? And if yes, then why? I love him very much. There are no why in love. Love simply happens. And it is a big happening in my life, which structured me, focused me, and I'm still very much focused. Right. I think that's a... I, I know it is. It's not the answer you're looking for it, but that's my reality. No, in fact, on the contrary, I think uh, this is a very important answer and I'll tell you why I think so. Uh, because of the reason that, you know, uh, nowadays we talk so much of relationships and breakups and divorces and marriages falling apart and there's a love marriage which was supposed to be made in heaven or whatever and then it doesn't work out after 10, 15, 2 years, 6 months, you never know. Um, so I think this is a very important perspective which people need to know about the fact that, you know, even if you had a falling out, with, like between you and Osho, even if you had a falling out, there was some miscommunication, there was uh, uh, some sort of bad blood involved, etc., some misunderstandings. But at the end of the day, what you choose to remember and what you choose to appreciate and understand is the fact that uh, you were in love with him and uh, you are in love with him and the fact that, you know, how that relationship really helped you in your life. Uh, I think that is something which people who go through breakups and divorces, that is something to 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 know that don't only look at the bitter side, also remember that you shared such beautiful memories together. Thank you so much for talking to us. There was a huge time difference between Switzerland and here. Thank you so much for taking out time and uh, talking to us. It is my pleasure, Kabir.